Hello and welcome to the um, quick chat at the end of the month. I wanted to do something, Jason, um, at the end of each month now. I, I used to have an email corner um, a, a couple of years ago where I used to just go over the things that we'd done in the studio and I wanted to invite you along uh, to that and his little Molly in the background. Look, she'll disappear yeah. now. He's, that dog is so quick. Honestly, you blink <laughs> and you will miss her. She's so <laughs> fast. She should have been born a whippet. And um, <laughs> so I thought, yeah, I'll just go over a couple of things that I've done this, this month and uh, just I'll, I'll invite you along to, see she's gone already, uh, invite you along to ask you a few questions as well that I get from my subscribers and hopefully that um, we can answer them between us. Yeah. So I had a lovely email today. Um, it says, hi Clive, I'm a 73 year old ex builder who took up painting uh, for a pastime with watercolors many years ago. Then I thought I would like to try acrylics and did not like it. But then I started watching your brilliant videos and I'm now painting without any fear. In fact, I've sold my first seascape. Hey! <laughs> so thanks to my brilliant videos, he's, he's selling the seascapes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. No, that's, it's nothing to do with me. That, that's just entirely yourself, uh, Fred, because um, I think if, if, if you're doing that, then you know, you're, you're using the skills that you've learned from the watercolors and um, and I think it's good if you if, if you haven't picked up a brush for a while. I think it's nice to get back into it. And um, I think acrylics are, are, are a good medium. Um, I am biased, but Jason, you use oil colours. I know as everybody does know. But yeah. um, I think it's preference, really, isn't it? You know. Oh yeah. I mean, I can use acrylics. I just have to uh, get the feel of them again. It's it's just the feel of the paint, and the process is slightly different. But yeah. And I think, uh, I think selling your first painting is, is a big, is a big uh, ooh, you know, it pushes you forward. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. My son goes fishing and, you know, I took him oh, years or years ago when he was about eight years old, he caught his first fish and he hasn't stopped fishing since. Mm. You know, it's that sense of achievement, isn't it? Yeah. And it's great that he's been able to create a painting to, for sale and he's learned the skills from watching you as well. well he also says that... Um, watching other YouTube videos uh, by you and others um, I would like to say that anyone can do anything with people like us um, and, and, and I feel that I know uh, know you and look forward to seeing you again and thank you very much Fred Sanders but thank you very much Fred um, yeah it's it's when I'm, and I'm sure Jason will will, will um, iterate on that when I make a video uh, I make a video for yourselves I talk to you as if you're you um, you're all individuals in my eyes and um, I think it's important that we treat you like that. And don't just try and brag about good we are or what we can do. <laughs> it's true, Jason, isn't it? We, we teach. Yeah. We, we're teachers at the end of the day. We want to <coughs> teach others. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I, I sort of imagine viewers watching and I try and think about what I think about at the same time. When Generally, when I'm learning, you have a lot of questions and I kind of try and answer those questions when I'm making a video the uh, best I can anyway um, well yeah it's, it's tough though talking and painting you kind of uh, forget your train of thought a lot so I start coming up with ideas and points really good points and then I forget them <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we tend to talk to ourselves a lot really don't we and I, I think making videos as well and what I've done since uh, we've been doing this diary thing is you know, I, f I find myself talking out loud now. I was said something to my wife the other day. She said, pardon? I said, oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're, you're, you're actually um, talking about your thought process. And, um, you know, you get used to doing that sometimes. And uh, I think it's good. I think it's good to share that type of knowledge as well. And, I, and I, I'm absolutely loving this Gainsborough Challenge and uh, um, uh, Ruben's channel, chal Challenge. So, I, 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 by the way, how was your challenge coming on? Is it all right, though? Are you coming? You getting it? I'm doing okay. I'm I'm getting to the point where and um, the frustrating part is uh, because of using oils, I have to wait for areas to dry for, to carry on. So I've had to wait for it to dry uh, the face because I'm working on the face at the moment. So I want to get that as close as I can, and uh, I've had to wait for it to dry, and I've done. A uh, couple of goes on it, but then I need to wait for it to dry again to have another go. But yeah, it's coming on. That's the yeah. question I was going to ask you. Actually, uh, it came up. Um, it came up the other day uh, about um, 
you know, oil paintings? Do you have you got a drying wall? Have you ever got anywhere that you can hang your paintings up, or do you do you have a drying wall? Have you ever used a drying wall uh, for oils? Um, I just I've had that question before. Actually, I I tend to hang them on the wall and just stick when while they're drying, just put them on the wall and leave it and uh, and work on the next one, or leave it on another easel. So I've got two easels next to each other, so sometimes I'll push it on the one that's drying onto the other easel, so I can still paint. Yeah, I used to, I used to, I used to stick them on top of a radiator. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if that's a good idea yeah. or not. <laughs> I've done that with, yeah. with acrylic paintings. I've done that. Yeah. Oh, I, I I've actually, done it with yeah. acrylics. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I've put one in the oven before as well. <laughs> <laughs> I did, well, to dry it off. Yeah. I never thought of doing that. Well, uh, <laughs> 250 degrees for about 30 minutes. <laughs> or until Christmas. Oh, yeah, I'm prison. <laughs> no, no, I left my painting in the oven. <laughs> Here's another one for you. Karen Dogs, uh, her name is, and or Corinne Dogs. Uh, how do I make white paint for oil painting that I paint on my canvas before I paint with colours? Like um, the Ips. It pins paints for blue clouds, and and it will be written me. So basically, I think she's what she's saying there is, um, how do I make a ground for oil painting? Um, do you put grounds on? What type of? Do you use an oil-based gesso, or do you use an acrylic-based gesso? Yeah, I I've used both. Uh, I tend to use acrylic-based gessos now because that. And when I went to buy some of the oil-based gesso um, primer, sorry, uh, they didn't have any, so I bought the acrylic-based one. <laughs> but it works all right for me. And also, sometimes I'll tone the canvas with acrylic as well. Yeah, I think that's... I do a lot of tone. I always tone my canvases. I, I, I've, I've gone to do that a lot more now since I've been filming because it, it upsets the, the exposures mm. on the cameras, so it's easier just to ground it off. But it... You know, yeah. it works both ways for me. Um, so, what is the difference between an oil-based gesso then? Is that um, is is it an easier? Have you got to wait for that to dry before you paint on it, or is, is it just? It's just a primer. Um, I, like I said, I wanted to buy it, and they didn't have it in stock, so oh, <laughs> I've mostly. Molly's I've, back. Oh yeah. Hey, Molly. <laughs> I've only really used uh, acrylic based gessos uh, that I've applied myself, but I have bought canvases that have been primed for oil. Uh, when I used to buy more expensive canvases, uh, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, you can buy you can buy very expensive um, gesso canvases for and canvas boards even for uh, for acrylics, but it is what it is. You know, it depends how much you want to spend on, out on it. You know, I yeah. mean, they are proper gesso canvases yeah. rather than prime canvases yeah and like uh, one year from uh, one of the Thomas Gainsborough's is actually Diary episode 6 and Joanne said that uh, she's telling me off here Jason that I'm still putting the brushes in my mouth <laughs> 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 I do tend to stick them in my mouth sometimes and the reason for that is because I'm an ex-smoker and I do tend to chew on bits of stick and stuff sometimes, especially when I'm concentrating. You know, I've always, I might I might have a brush in my mouth, but um, yeah, it's it, it's uh, it's not it's not a, it's not an ideal thing to try and put brushes in your mouth, especially you don't know what's in your hands, especially with oil painting more than anything. Um, I did have a question the other day about cadmium paints, uh, Hugh, and. Um, I just wanted to say that most cadmium paints these days are, are non-toxic, especially the acrylics. Uh, they're, they're all non-toxic, actually. I think the Hue just carries a name now, rather than um, actually cadmium, cadmium in the paints themselves. Because they, they're not going to put arsenic and cadmium and all that other stuff in paints, they? and sell it to you. So um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. As far as I was aware, a Hue, like a cadmium Hue, isn't actually cadmium. It's a artificial pigment. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it's, it's, but the most, the most of the um, uh, well, all of the the, the paint pigments these days are non-toxic in acrylics. So yeah. they, 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 even though it says cadmium red, there's no cadmium in it. <coughs> you know, you've got a cadmium here. I, I think the name is just carried on, and I think I it's think, just I think the uh, cadmium they use now in paints um, is like safe 
Uh, I wouldn't recommend eating it, but um, <laughs> it's it passes through the body and it doesn't cause any ill effects, as far as I know. So don't don't get a tube of paint going. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. No. <laughs> uh, Peter James, and this is again on Diary Six um, on the Thomas Gainsborough I'm doing. Um, thanks, Clive. Just sitting here eating some toast and watching your lessons. Hey, thank you, Peter. <laughs> So I don't know when I don't know how long this toast eating contest was taking place, <laughs> but this was when I took, this was two days ago. So um, great advice from you that needs uh, repeating many times. I'm seventy. Hey, we're getting a younger audience, Jason, <laughs> and self-taught. And I think I'm, I'm I'm not too bad at this time, but I still have uh, some self-doubts. So even now, oh, it's a lonely pursuit sometimes for artists. So it's a great job to listen to you and Jason and to see the sheer joy of you both get from your paintings. And I often go on from watching those lessons straight to my easel with a renewed energy and great painting vigour. <laughs> so we are, we are, at least we are helping the young, the young as well as the old then. So, that's, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. yeah. I feel a bit like that sometimes when I watch someone else do a painting. It um, gets me fired up. When I was watching your diary, and I was like, right, I really want to do a paint, get work on my painting now. I've seen Clive doing his. It does work. <laughs> exactly <laughs> the same happened to me, Jace, the other day when you said, God, you could, we, we always share the videos before we put them out. So, we, you know, we have a little sneaky peek between us, which is good. And, um, oh, I've done mine, I've done mine, I've just edited it. Let's have a look. And, and, and I've done exactly the same thing. I popped straight in here and I started painting. I thought, yeah, it's great. And it, it is good. It is a good way of doing it. And it's so hot in this studio tonight. I'm not actually sitting outside the studio. I'm actually sitting in that <laughs> studio. And I wish my doors open like that because yeah. it is roasting in here. Yeah, it's I, roasting. And I've got well. my shorts on. Let me show a leg. <laughs> <laughs> so I am yeah. absolutely sweating. So what's the temperature like there? there in, 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 in that part of England where you live? It, it's hot, hot, hot. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. Yeah, 27 yeah. degrees in my car today. Yeah. I was sunbathing today. Look how red my chest is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been working. Look how red my face is. And, then, and I caught a bit of sudden burn. I'm losing some hair to help you. It's all falling off the top of my head and going <laughs> onto my chin. So when you get to my age, Jason, it sprouts out of your ears, your nose, your, your chin, and everywhere else. <laughs> but you lose it on your head. <laughs> Linda Jenkins. Uh... Thanks, Clive. I sold my first painting at an art exhibition last year. Um, what a terrific feeling that was. My dad was a window cleaner, and he's still around at 93. Oh, I got jobs going. <laughs> <laughs> he used to cycle around with his ladders and me in the sidecar attached to the side of this cycle. Thanks for sharing. I'm learning so much. Well, Linda, let me tell you something, love. Um, it, I used to. I, I started off with a wooden ladder, Jason, a chamois leather, and a bucket. And my father kicked me out of the house. He said, "Go and earn a living." At 16, <laughs> and I'm still cleaning windows to this day. And um, <laughs> things have moved on a little bit. But yeah, I had a push bike, and I was, and I did exactly the same thing. Try carrying a ladder on a push bike, Jason. It's not easy, especially a wooden mm -hmm. ladder. And I got greatest respect for your dad, Linda, uh, at 93 as well. So a uh, big shout out to your dad. Um, there we go. Uh, we've got another one. Christine Riddle. Hi Clive. Uh, I used really fine sawdust from the pet shop to mix with my acrylics. Oh. Do you, can you mix anything with oil paints, Jays? You've seen me mixing um, chalk and stuff with mine. Um, you could mix like beeswax with it or um, um, I'm sure there's other things. I haven't really gone into it that uh, that much to be honest. I tend to be okay with the paint out straight out the tube <laughs> yeah because you know with, with acrylics you've got things like um, all these different additives like you know um, pumice and you've got um, glass beads and you've got all this other stuff and, and sawdust um, mm. some of my Welsh art paintings you've seen um, I showed you last week mm. I actually ground down coal dust you know coal and, and, and I made mm. some gesso with, with actual coal and I paint my paintings by especially my miners uh, with that because I just want the not anybody's gonna, you know, know the difference, but I know there is actually coal in there, and it, to me, yeah, I think it's, it makes the painting more. Um, it's, it's got it's got more of a feeling to it. I don't know, I might be different. I, I don't know if I'm right or not, but they do feel um, more alive then, if that makes any sense. So, um, 
Uh, I may say it is, it is. Uh, uh, she does say though, uh, well, uh, make sure that it's shop bought um, from the pet shop because it's allergy free and acid and sap free. In other words, it's clean. So um, that's, a, that's a good tip. So don't just pick up sawdust. You can put sand in acrylic as well. There's loads of things you can put in acrylic. Um, and if you want to do uh, textures and stuff like that. So, um, mm. But you just use plain oils, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I, I've looked at the mediums for acrylics and thought they, they would be interesting, but never tried anything out. I think it's a lot of mixed media. Uh, people are doing <coughs> a lot of mixed media with this, the acrylics as well. Um, so I think that's, you know, abstracts and, and stuff like that. And it is, you can leave the, the acrylic paint dry uh, and then you can peel it and you use paint flakes and you can use that as decoupage and it's wonderful stuff. Huh. There's one for you, um, Clive. I, uh, this is from uh, Glen Glen Coates. Um, Clive, I've been wondering how you secure your canvases on your easel. Is it because it's floating in the middle, which gives you a full edge to edge access? How do you do that? Uh, but you, you, I know you secure your canvases, Jason. So uh, how do you secure your canvases? Actually, uh, um, I do a different method now. I used to use um, tape and put it on the back, and uh, I actually prefer your idea for doing it. But now uh, I'm using a different easel, and uh, I can set it so it clamps the canvas down from the top, so I don't have uh, an issue with um, the bit that hangs over. Yeah, because I notice you do the same as I do. You've got a backboard, uh, and I think we, yeah, we we might be doing the right same thing is because the only reason we got a backboard is because we're videoing. You know, if yeah. I was painting on, on, on my easel, I wouldn't have a backboard there. Um, yeah. I think the problem is with easel designs, a lot of easels have this lip that goes in front and that is the most annoying thing ever. So um, something I used to do before is I used to get a piece of wood and I'd put it on top of the canvas and then I'd push the canvas to the top. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Great <laughs> balance. That's what I, exactly what I've done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to get away from that horrible lip. And uh, I don't know if you, you notice on a couple of mine as well. I, I don't know. I've, I've used uh, pencil erasers or rubbers. Oh, uh, yeah. And I put them as little sponges you know, in, on that clamp. And I've also put yeah. them underneath the, the bottom of the, 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 ease, uh, the um, canvas so I can paint down to the edge. That's a good idea. You know, um, the other thing is, let me ask you a question. Um, do you do you all do you paint when you're doing a commission or something? Do you always paint the edges of your canvas, or do you leave uh, them? I leave them because they get framed normally. So it's exactly. People ask me this question. Unless you've got a gallery wrap canvas, you know, which is yeah. the, the the deep edged ones. Um, yeah. I, I don't bother because more often than not, they get framed anyway. Um, okay. Oh, I got one here. Um, from a Jason Bowen. Clive, you should wear a lab coat when you do your acrylic science episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just happen to have the man a responsible for that going next to me. <laughs> so what are you trying to say, my friend? <laughs> so the big question is, have you got a lab coat yet? <laughs> I can get one. <laughs> I, I guess you liked that episode then, did you, of the, um, yeah, the underbinding? Yeah. It's interesting watching your uh, videos where you do different things. I like the one, I like the one where you had an egg <laughs> <laughs> and you used all those other bits. But tempera, you know, egg, egg. Well, what, what is a tempera? It's, it's, it's a pigment yeah. mixed with egg white. So, you know, you can use that, you know, egg white. It, 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 I, I, another question I was asked, it, are, are they, are they um, archival? Right, all these things that you can put in acrylics or even oils, right? But in as far as you were concerned, you know what's archival and what's not because your medium has been run for centuries. Now, when people say to me, "Does it, is our egg white archival? Is KY jelly archival? Is air gel archival?" I don't know because it's only been around since 1955. So, you know, if you know, if unless I, we can time jump 300 years to see if all this acrylic paint is flipped off the canvases. We don't know. Yeah. I, I've got a question. Um, the KY jelly, did you uh, buy that over the counter or did you uh, <laughs> do it online? 
<laughs> it just happened to have a two blade around. I got, <laughs> it, I got it from the pound shop. <laughs> two pound fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's 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 the same stuff as hair gel, believe it or not. Hair gel and KY jelly. Can I tell you a story about KY jelly? If you watch oh. the film, if you watch the no, if you watch the <laughs> film Aliens, and you see all the drool on the aliens, that's oh, yeah. all. That's all that stuff. And, and it's it was, it's made in bulk, and it's uh, it's a it's all it is is, is silica bound in water, which makes a, like a, a gel. Um, and that's the same thing for hair gel. It's in a lot of cosmetics. It's it's basically. Uh, the only difference between hair gel and KY jelly is be the hair gel has got perfume in it, it smells nicer. But basically, all it is is a thick water. That's all it is. Um, so, there we are. Are you saying if I bought some KY jelly and put it in my hair, I could style it? I've done that. <laughs> I've done that. Look, I, wear, I use hair gel, right? I use hair gel. And I didn't have any. And I did happen to have a tube of that in the studio. Okay, wait, Jerry. I thought, oh, I know what I can get some hair gel. <laughs> <laughs> I put that on and it worked. And it worked? <laughs> yeah, of course it does. It's the same stuff. I didn't realise that. <laughs> it is exactly the same stuff, honestly. Okay, well, we won't go into the other uses. <laughs> <laughs> right, what else can you do with hair gel? Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> They got me blushing, and you can't tell because I've got some today. <laughs> it's reflection on my T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you put me off now. Uh, <coughs> oh, this here's one for me. This one, this one is from Tranquil. Tranquil is a lovely name. Tranquil. I bet I bet he's at peace with himself. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Tranquil. I th I don't know if you're male or female. It's it's. I don't know if Tranquil. I don't know if that's male or female. So. Uh, the gesso you made was not clear. I, I, I got a video of making your own uh, clear gesso. Mm. Okay, so the gesso you made was not clear, but of an off white in colour. However, one question I have is this suitable for oil painting? Do you, you Can you use clear ge uh, gesso in oil painting? Well, of course you can if it's acrylic, can you, Jason? Yeah, well, it, I'm assuming your clear gesso is the same properties as normal gesso. The only difference right. is it's got no pigment in it. Yeah, because so I would say yeah then, same. Because because um, uh, <coughs> the, the, the adhesive, the, the polymer adhesive that's used is, is white in colour. Mm. Uh, it's like PVA glue then. Oh, Molly's back. Hello, Molly. Hello. <laughs> Watch out how she goes. No, I told you. And um, <laughs> she's so fast. Um, because it's... it's because it's white and you mix the, car the calcium to it, but when it dries, uh, like any PVA glue, it will just dry clear. So what it, all it does then is puts a, a sealant on, on the canvas, but leaves mm. the, the chalk in place. Yeah. Um, I don't understand the use of clear gesso myself personally. Why would you want to use clear gesso? I, I can't understand that. Uh, you know? the only, I, I can think of one way. If, if you was going to paint, on say a piece of wood and you wanted to see the wood grain behind the gesso um, then it could work if you only wanted to paint an area and leave the grain of the wood yeah yeah you understand quite hard. Uh, maybe if you you had like a piece of furniture and you wanted to do like a little painting on uh, the side of the sideboard or something but you don't want maybe you just wanted to paint a flower you didn't want to do like a picture so you could put your gesso on and then paint on it. You know, all, all gesso is basically is it's it, you've got you've got two types of gesso. You've got a pop, you've got an acrylic <laughs> resin based gesso, which is uh, well you've got three types. You've got oil based gesso, but you've got an acrylic resin based, which is the same resin that's in your your, your paints, your acrylic paints, or you've got a latex based uh, gesso, which is what they use for uh, shabby chic furniture and stuff like that. So the 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 shabby chic paint. Is the same stuff as gesso. It's just latex based and not uh, polymer based. So, mm. but it, there's a very thin line between latex and polymer resin. You know what I mean? It, 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 there's not much difference between either. I don't think one is more rubbery than. So, I'll take your word. <laughs> you take your word for it. <laughs> uh, oh, I've just answered that one. Um, Linda Lee asked if uh, PVA glue and glycerine are archival. I don't know, Linda Lee, because as I said, acrylics have only been around since 1955. We haven't got the data there, have we? You know, the manufacturers would say to you, don't put anything in acrylic paint. 
um, that doesn't belong there because you're not going to be responsible for it breaking down and peeling. Uh, it's the same thing as getting the Q-tip and sticking it in and trying to clean the wax out of your ears. My mother said, don't put anything in your ears bigger than your elbow. Yeah. <laughs> so don't, if, you don't, if you don't want to do it, don't do it, basically. Mm. But if you want to try, we don't know. Um, okay, uh, another Christine Riddle. Um, I think she's uh, a Welsh lady. Christy, I think you're Welsh lady. I think that's correct. Um, Clive, you deserve an award for teaching art and all its values. You deserve a million things up front. Uh, and arty hugs for me. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? If everybody would give us a dollar, Jason, we'd be happy, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that goes for everybody making videos and uh, teaching. But um, hugs always go a long way tonight, Jess. <laughs> so I, I bored you enough now tonight because you were just joining me on the channel. And, and thank you very much for your help. No, it's good um, to be here. I, I like being on this channel. So, um, are we going to be doing something on your channel um, soon, or you, do you want to do something? Do you want to invite me along, or you, you might want to invite somebody else? I don't know. Yeah, well, well, we'll see who <laughs> opportunities arise. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to cut this short because I get it so hot? I want to open this door. <laughs> <laughs> I wish yeah. I was at that beach. Good. If anybody wants to know about the beach, check check <laughs> check the i cards up there because uh, we had a little chat the other week, didn't we, uh, Jason, on the uh, beach? Check the beach scene out. Uh, yeah, it's good fun. So sit back, have a look with Jason. Pop along to Jason Bowen's channel, um, and he's also <laughs> he's also on uh, Patreon as well. So please support him where you can and Facebook because he did advise me that he was not on Twitter anymore. Uh, so um, just Facebook there, yes. And uh, myself, if you want to pop along to Patreon, yeah, pop along to Patreon. Sponsor me for as little as a dollar a month. <laughs> there you go, he's gone. No, and uh, Facebook and Twitter, and um, obviously take away the stress of everyday life for me here in Wales. And thank you very much, Jason, for joining me um, on on the channel tonight. And um, well, it's goodbye for me. Yeah, and uh, it's goodbye from me. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Cheers.